Spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. <laughs> Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to class 10 in the Principles of Flight series. In the previous classes we've looked at stalling and how we are warned about upcoming stalls. One of the reasons we really dislike stalling is because of spinning. Spinning is a horrible condition that can be tricky to get out of unless you know what you're doing. In this short class we're going to be looking at why we spin and also the basic philosophy of how to get out of them if we do get into them. Quick side note, obviously what I'm saying here is just the theoretical side of spin recovery and it is no substitute for the actual practical skills that you will gain in flying lessons from a qualified instructor. For a spin to occur, two things need to happen. The aircraft needs to be in a stalled state and there needs to be presence of uncontrolled rolling, yawing or pitching motion which is known as auto rotation. Auto rotation is caused when one wing stalls before the other. This leads to an imbalance in the amount of lift produced by uh, the wings and you have more upwards lift force on one wing than the other, which will lead to this rolling motion. As the aircraft begins to roll, there's a secondary effect, which is yaw. This leads to the outer wing having to travel more distance through the air so the air travels over it faster. The outer wing is traveling faster through the air, which means that if you look at the lift equation, the speed goes up, which means it produces more lift, which means it goes out of balance more, which means it yaws more, and it just continues. The cycle continues and it gets worse and worse and it starts to rotate on its own. It auto rotates without any input from the pilots. A fully developed spin is where these rates of yaw and roll have stabilized and the plane falls down a helical flight path. It's important to know that it's not flying down the path as the angle of attack is really high and the relative airflow will be hitting the underside of the wing and it won't be creating any lift. So as it stalls and it's falling through the air, the air starts to hit it on the bottom and if you take the chord line and the relative airflow, you can see the angle of attack there is absolutely huge. Normally you're expecting the angle of attack to come in sort of this um, angle here. When you're in a spin, it's huge. Due to this rotating helical motion, the gyroscopic effect and the centrifugal forces that are felt just by this rotation make the aircraft pitch up, which obviously causes us to stall more and more. Another important point to note is the position of the center of gravity. So if you have an aft center of gravity, one that's further back, um, you will stall, uh, the aircraft, sorry, will be in a flatter state when it's rotating around. And conversely, if it's nose heavy, basically, if it's got a forward center of gravity, it will be slightly lower nose attitude. The case with the center of gravity aft is a lot worse than the case with the center of gravity forward. If you think about the wing, if you're falling very flat, the air will be hitting the underside of this wing and this angle of attack will be absolutely massive. Whereas if you think of it as uh, nose forward, the angle of attack is much less severe. So in order to reduce our angle of attack back below our critical angle, it's a lot more distance to go if you're in this flat spin rather than if you're in this uh, forward, uh, center of gravity forward spin. So spins, as we saw, are really hard to recover from because you've got this massive angle of attack and it's spinning out of control. So the way to recover from that is to simply avoid the stall and avoid auto rotation. Okay, end of class. Only joking. But first of all, let's look at this. Avoiding the stall condition is a guarantee to not spin. If you exceed the critical angle, just lower the nose of the aircraft until you're below it. Also, when you are approaching the critical angle of attack, 
Avoiding any roll in the wings will reduce the chances of one wing stalling before the other, which will lead to more roll and obviously make the problem worse. So that's what to do in order to avoid it, but what to do once you're actually in it. So again, you have to eliminate the stall and the auto rotation. The first thing to do in the spin situation is to reduce the power. So the power of the propeller or the jet will add to the centrifugal forces and the gyroscopic effects and any inertial forces that are actually generated in that helical spin. So by reducing the power, you immediately make the problem a little bit easier to deal with. You reduce some of these forces. The next thing to do is to use the rudder. So you use the rudder to stop the rotation because your wings are stalled. Your tail isn't necessarily stalled though. If you think about the airflow when we're in the uh, spin, it's coming up from underneath and hitting the um, underside of the wing. So the wing is stalled, but the rudder is actually just a wing, but on a different plane. So if you think about the rudder, which is in the tail, the airflow that's important to it is this airflow coming in here. It doesn't matter if there's airflow coming up below, as long as it's coming also um, front on with the rudder. So you use the rudder because it is much less likely to be stalled than the wings. Well, in a spin, the wings have to be stalled. So basically you apply the rudder in the full opposite direction of the spin. If you're spinning you know, clockwise, you put the rudder in so that you come out of that spin. At the same time as applying this full opposite rudder, you also pitch the aircraft nose down in order to try and reduce this angle of attack and get us out of the stall. An important thing to note is that when you recover from the stall, you'll be on a very nose down attitude. So it's important not to pull back too hard on the controls because that will increase the load factor a lot. And as we saw in the last class, if you um, increase the load factor, then the stall speed will go up. So you could actually stall again by pulling back too hard. So to quickly summarize then, an aircraft to spin needs to be stalled and it needs to have auto rotation. We know what stalling is from the previous classes and auto rotation is when one wing stalls before the other and the unbalanced uh, amounts of lift cause a rolling motion. And then the secondary effect of yaw is felt and that means that one wing travels through the air faster and because it's traveling through faster it produces more lift which causes this effect more which causes this effect more and the whole cycle continues it self-sustains without any pilot interaction when we are in a spin the angle of attack is huge because the air is hitting directly below the aircraft and it is very hard to recover from it because we have to try and reduce our angle of attack and our ailerons will be ineffective because the angle of attack will be too large, meaning they are stalled. Aircraft with a aft center of gravity position will spin in a flatter state and those with a forward CFG position will spin with a slightly lower nose. The aft condition is a lot worse because the air, the relative airflow is hitting almost vertical which means our angle of attack is close to 90 degrees, which obviously is very large. And with a forward CFG, our angle of attack will be much lower and therefore the recovery will not need to be as drastic. To recover, we have to get out of the stall and stop auto rotation. The three steps are to reduce the power, to take away any inertial centrifugal forces caused by the spinning engine, we then apply rudder in the opposite direction to the spin because the rudder is more likely to still be effective than the ailerons on the wings. And then we try and lower the nose because that's the only way to get out of the stall condition is to reduce the angle of attack. So by the, reducing the power, we make the problem easier to solve. By doing the rudder in the opposite direction, we get rid of the auto rotation and reducing the pitch, we avoid the stall. And then when we recover, we're gonna be very nose down, so it's important not to pull back too hard. Otherwise, we could get to that high load factor and our stall speed will increase, and we could go back into the stall and maybe even back into the spin. 